Hey, everybody, it's John from The Hustle Daily Show. Before we get into the show today, did you know that HubSpot launched an AI chatbot that helps you build awesome campaigns at scale with just a few prompts? It's called Campaign Assistant, and it's a totally free to use AI tool made for marketers and business leaders who spend hours a day on content creation. Campaign Assistant will transform the way that you build marketing campaigns at scale. Craft personalized emails, ads, and landing pages in just a matter of minutes. Just pick the content type, add the key selling points, and let the AI take it from there. And the best part? It works seamlessly with all of HubSpot's marketing and sales tools to scale your output across email, social, and more. So AI your way into the most effective campaigns yet at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. It is Monday, October 10th. I'm Rob Litterst. And I'm here with Jacob Cohen, and you are listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're going to talk about the brewing battle over audiobooks. Almost a year after acquiring Findaway, an audiobook distribution platform, Spotify announced its own audiobooks product to take on Audible. We're going to break down why this move makes sense for Spotify and whether or not they can compete head-to-head with Amazon. But before we get into all that, let's take a quick look at what else is going on in the world of business and tech. Rivian, which is an EV manufacturer that's kind of been lumped in with Tesla as one of the auto companies that's really going to change the game and push cars towards electric, has built a little bit over 14,000 electric SUVs and pickups this year. Unfortunately, the company just recalled 13,000 of them due to a loose nut that risks steering loss. Internal memos show that Meta's VP of the Metaverse, that is a real title, is enforcing weekly employee use of the Horizon product in order for them to fall in love with it. We'll see how that goes. Dan Whedon, the ad exec who never wanted to go into advertising, just passed away on September 30th. You might know him because he's responsible for Nike's legendary slogan, Just Do It. A cobalt mine opened in Idaho to meet demand for EV batteries and battery storage. When it previously shut down in 1982, it was the only such mine in the U.S. Portugal's new digital nomad visa allows workers who make $2,700 per month or more to apply to live there for one year or for residency. And lastly, an Uber passenger was charged $39,000 for a 15-minute ride to Australia, despite being in England. Thankfully, Uber fixed it. All right, JC, let's talk about audiobooks. Why the heck is Spotify getting into this space? Yeah, so Spotify itself actually came out in June. It's a big presentation, investor day presentation, uh, where they discussed broadly where they want to go with this. But in that presentation, they said the audiobook uh, or the book market globally is a $140 billion market. And six to 7% of that is the audiobook market. So around $9 billion nowadays. Gotcha. But by uh, 2030, it's forecasted that the audiobook segment will reach $35 $35 billion market. So a lot of growth. That's why they're going into this space and going into this space uh, hard, as, the, as they put it. We're playing to win. Love it. And so a couple of weeks back, they officially launched their section, their first iteration of audiobooks on the app. It's such a first iteration. In fact, like you can't actually even buy the books in the app yet. You have to leave the app to buy them and then go back in the app, which is like so backwards. And I was reading this. So weird. if you yeah. <laughs> if you try to buy one, they send you an email, right? And then you have to complete the payment like through some web form or whatever from your email. Yeah, this, this basically came a year after they acquired an audiobook distribution platform called Findaway. I've been integrating that, I'm sure, and building that out internally. And this move, obviously, you mentioned the Kindle, puts Spotify and Amazon sites, Audible, as a more than 40% command of the US audiobook market. Yeah, that's exactly the question here. So Audible has been around for a while. I know a lot of people love Audible. A lot of people don't love Audible because I hear people complaining that it hasn't changed in like 10 years. It's no been competitor. the exact same for yeah. a long time, which <laughs> right, which happens with yeah. with products and I think Amazon products specifically this can happen sometimes. What what is Spotify's play here? Like, do you think they could actually take this market share from Audible and and ultimately end up winning? Yeah. So there's some really interesting points that kind of highlight why Spotify is really uniquely positioned to take on Amazon 
in a really effective way. And the first, uh, uh, the main one, I think, is is something called the Spotify machine. Ooh. And that is a term Spotify uses. CEO Daniel Ek ha- has used it, uh, which, which basically represents this idea that the company has a proven practice of bundling verticals into just a consumer experience that, as he said, benefits the users, creators, ad partners, developers, and Spotify itself. And basically what this is, is they will take on a vertical, whether it's music, whether it's podcasts, whether it's audiobooks, take learnings from whatever one they they did originally and the ones they, they followed it with. And then whatever new vertical they're going after, they're going to use all those learnings, use the platform that they've built beforehand and use the playbooks and just plug and play and do the same thing with a new vertical. So, you know, like in 2018, for instance, 90% of Spotify's revenue basically came from subscriptions from people that were listening to music. And they took what they were learning from those users who were using Spotify for music, and they spent hundreds of millions of dollars on podcast studios and podcast technology companies for ads and measurement. And they used the Spotify machine and went into podcasts. And now they're doing the same thing, uh, it looks like, with audiobooks. It's really interesting. Like you mentioned kind of how Spotify has evolved. And I feel like they've been building these three kind of assets that they have that are super, super powerful for them. So one is they have incredible technology for machine learning. They put together curated playlists based on your tastes. And I guess like even taking a step further back than that, they collect a ton of data on people. And also your behaviors too, right? Like when you're listening to things and right. uh, where you're listening to things. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it's funny because like you talk about that, y- you think about that, like their ability to do personalization. And then you think about Amazon, like Amazon has a ton of data on people too. And they're really good at targeting people with the right products at the right time. But it feels like Audible is kind of disconnected from Amazon proper. Like if if Audible, I don't know, like I just feel like there's a world where they could be a little bit better at, at using what you're doing on Amazon to recommend the right audiobook to you at the right time. Yeah. Another thing that Spotify has developed is this proprietary advertising offering. So they have this automated, like for their own podcast, like if you listen to like the Bill Simmons podcast or the Joe Rogan podcast or any of these big time podcasters that are exclusive to Spotify, they might not actually be exclusive to Spotify, but anyway, they... Yeah they ultimately have these inserts with ads that use Spotify's advertising technology. And I was reading something earlier talking about how they're exploring ways to do this within audiobooks, which is interesting because it gets like really technical. Like, I don't know if they come kind of like fully formed or if it's the type of thing that Spotify can actually like dissect and like plug in advertising here and there between chapters or something like that. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense, right? Like you, there are ads that come up in podcasts in the middle of the podcast, but yeah. And likewise with an audiobook, which is basically a long podcast, there's a lot of room for ads. Right. And I'm sure they're looking deep into modeling out yeah. what ads in audiobooks would look like and how they could make it really easy for publishers to put those ads in and uh, fit them in and everything. It does seem like it could end up being a really cool play for them from a pricing standpoint, because if they figure it out, they'll be able to give away audiobooks for free. And they like they could give away some audiobooks for free with ads, and then they could have people have to you know either pay a subscription or buy some individually. And one thing about Audible is it's not cheap. I'm pretty sure it's like 15 bucks a month. And then you have to pay for each incremental audiobook that you buy beyond the one that you get per month. So it could be a really interesting model for them to drive acquisition and kind of pull people from Audible into the Spotify vortex. But super interesting. And it's also right, like there's so many options. Like you could just buy books one at a time. You could have books play for free with ads you could have different tiers of books like i could see all those you know those what's a what do they call those the books you find in the airport uh self-help books are like the free books with ads and then like the real novels like you have to pay for (laughs) Um, totally so there's a lot of interesting options here but uh you know parents might find this this (laughs) appealing because you're probably going to see uh, more promotion for for teen novels and less for the latest uh, Drake album. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's no such thing as too much Drake, but I I do agree that's probably that's true. reassuring that's true. For, for teens <laughs> or for parents. That's true. That's true. <laughs> 
All right, that is going to do it for us today. Thank you all for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We are a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Truppiano, and our executive producer is the one and only Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Go get yourself signed up at thehustle.co slash email. Have a wonderful Monday, and we will see you tomorrow. Hey, guys. If you listen to The Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.